There are countless astonishing ruins upon the islands of Malta, many of which we have covered in the past, some in particular being of such an advanced nature that many a dedicated researcher has come away from said sites with a strong suspicion and awareness of stolen evidence, suggesting to them that whoever built these buildings must have had some form of assistance from someone or something with a far greater intellect than that of ancient or even modern man. One in particular, a structure with such mystifying properties, we have now covered it on two occasions here on our channel. However, upon the lesser-known Maltese island of Gozo stands the oldest yet no less astounding ruin of Malta, known as Gigantia. Thought to mean giant's tower, it is a megalithic temple complex of tremendous antiquity, with many concluding that it far predates even that of the Great Pyramid complex of Giza. A group of Neolithic stones still left in formation, which continue to give modern man a small glimpse into the astonishing past abilities of its builders. Thanks to the moderate, long-lasting temperate climes of the Mediterranean, Gigantia's megaliths still stand, giving us a chance to explore this remarkable site. And what must be considered the most intriguing factor surrounding its construction is the ancient folklore that can still be found swirling within the minds of the local Goatsians. This legend tells of an ancient giant, a female, who long after her supposed demise continued to be worshipped here, with many of the temple's elements now recognized as ceremonial sites, specifically oriented around the rites of female fertility. This folklore has also been intriguingly corroborated by a number of astute, honest researchers who have, over the years, successfully unearthed numerous figurines and statues at sight, specifically associated with this ancient cult. According to local Gozitan folklore, a giantess who ate nothing but bread, beans, and honey once bore a child here, from a man selected from the common people. And with the child hanging from her shoulder, she built these temples to not only use as her abode, but to later be used as her burial location, and thus a place of worship. Yet according to academia, who disregard such legends as having any historical accuracy, still concede that the effort to create such a site was undeniably a remarkable feat, especially when one considers that these monuments were constructed at a time even before the wheel had been introduced and indeed predates the invention of metal tools. However, as they so fervently deny the possibility of past ancient giants, we feel they should consider the most remarkable characteristics of Gigantia being the scale of its still existing yet highly eroded megalithic blocks, with some still in situ, weighing far in excess of 10 tons, somehow transported from a faraway location and placed within the temple walls with such ease and skill that to deny the fact that even if not the work of an ancient giant, but the accomplishments of a past civilization, that they were clearly far greater than those currently claimed within the history books, and to deny such reality to us is a sign of negligence in their responsibility to convey to a learning population the truth of world history. Who built Gigantia? How did they build it with such enormous stones and with such an awareness of cardinal orientations? Was it, as the legend states, once built single-handedly by an ancient female giant? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. In our last video, we explored the remarkable ancient remains of a purported temple still to be found upon the Maltese island of Gozo, a site that according to local legend was constructed by an ancient giant. Known as Giagantia, it is, intriguingly, not the only ancient ruin in existence in the area which share a similar legend surrounding its inexplicable construction and possible ancient giant origins. Among many other such sites is a perplexing structure that can be found upon another Mediterranean island, Menorca. 
largely accepted as the most remarkable megalithic chamber on the island, which is, predictably, academically claimed as a tomb. The site is known as the Neveta des Todos, and according to academia, is dated as a Bronze Age structure from the pre tylayot period. This account, like many other academically posited claims of origin, solely surround the vast array of surviving archaeology found at such sites, often providing their explanations absent of any logical explanations as to how such sites were built, which is so often conveniently overlooked by these funded academic gatekeepers. However, we do indeed believe that these Bronze Age relics confirm that it did, indeed, once serve as a collective ossuary, from the pertained date of between 1200 and 750 BC. Yet, we also believe a vast amount of the structure's true history is missing. Consisting of two chambers, which we feel, long after the original intention for the construction, and indeed its actual builders became lost to history, was used, like many other ancient sites, due to their inexplicable and awe-inspiring grandeur, by our bronze and copper-wielding ancestors for ritual purposes. With the Navita des Tatons later used as an altar room for funeral offerings. Interestingly, and linking back to our previously noted research pertaining to Giagancia, according to a similar local legend within the area, that the Navita des Tatons, and also that of the Po de San Barina, which roughly translates as the Well of the Driller, was built by two male giants who were competing for the love of a local average-sized girl. Which, although similar to that of Giagancia, Giagancia's legends surround a female giant. The site was first discovered and described within modern history during the early 19th century, but was left unexcavated until 1959, eventually excavated by archaeologist Luis Perico Garcia. Unsurprising to us, he found the mysterious structure to have contained the remains of at least 100 skeletons, including various artifacts including bronze bracelets, bone, and ceramic buttons. These, we posit, were the result of these ancient people perceiving such site as having godly importance, this due to its seemingly impossible construction and mysterious origins. According to Garcia's research, the structure had intentionally been created to resemble the shape of an upturned boat, with a challenge for its original giant builders, who in competition for the love of the local mistress, was to drill a well nearby until one struck water. The first to complete the task would marry the girl. Then, according to his investigations of local legend, when the giant building the structure was placing the last stone, the other giant successfully struck water. In a fit of savage jealousy, the builder threw his last stone, killing his rival. Then, feeling unbearable remorse, killed himself. Who built the Navidas des Tadons? Was it indeed built, like the many other sites throughout the world, often claimed by local legend, built by ancient giants? We find the site, and indeed its attached folklore, highly compelling.